What if you want a 25 meter yacht with four luxurious cabins, sprawling deck spaces, looks to die for, and serious performance? Well, look no further than the AB Yacht 80 Incentivize. She's a 2023 model, and with her triple MAN 2000 horsepower engine, she will top out at 57 knots. She's currently on the market with Burgess for just under $10.5 million, and we'll put a link to the brokerage page in the description, but we're gonna give you a full tour of this one, and she is a serious piece of engineering. So let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Let's start down here at the waterline then. We have a big fixed platform. It isn't hydraulic, it doesn't drop down, but you have got a garage here. So this whole section swings up and inside there, there's space for two jet skis and they come out on trolleys, lower down into the water. Then when you pull them in, you attach a winch and they get dragged back in to that garage there. So that all works very nicely. It means everything's tucked away. There's nothing on deck. Again, performance machine. You don't necessarily want toys out on deck. So having them tucked away in there is really, really good. Heading up into the cockpit, and this is a really great space. You've got a sun pad up here on top of that tender garage, but it also acts as a bench that faces these tables. Worth pointing out, you've also got a control station here, so you've got the joystick for the jets and a bow thruster control. We'll explain how all that works later on in the video, but this is a good position, especially if you're mooring stern two. And this boat's got quite small tables. You could have one big table if you wanted, of course, but this particular boat's got these smaller twin tables. They're adjustable, go down to coffee table height, perfect for drinks, snacks, and that sort of thing. And it gives you a huge amount of floor space here. And one of the key features of this main deck design is this unbroken link between these two areas. The automatic doors pop right open and you have this seamless connection between the galley aft and this cockpit area here as well. And this is a nice piece of design too. The way that the staircase is integrated, you've got a fridge down here as well, so you don't have to go inside the boat to get cold drinks. It all works very nicely. Let's head forward. Moving forward, you've got boarding gates on both sides, which makes it very easy to get on and off here if you're alongside a quayside. And then we come to one of the most striking parts of the 80s design, which is this huge glass area here. You can get a sense of the scale of it with me standing next to it. It is vast. And you also have glass here in the bulwarks. I mean, there's so much to clean here. It's all beautiful and shiny, hard work for the crew, but my God, does it look good from side on this boat. And also all of that glass has a huge effect on the amount of natural light in the interior, which we'll see in a moment. There's a side door here here so you have another access point aside from the cockpit doors in and out of that main deck saloon and then right forward you come to a really important socializing space you've got some sunbathing space up top which again we'll look at in a moment but aside from the cockpit on the main deck this is where you're going to be living and this is the proper party area you can probably start to pick up the number of speakers here this boat has got 14 speakers and six subwoofers on deck alone it's got about half a million dollars worth of sound system it is a proper party machine and this is a really lovely space to socialize you've got the sofa here big sun pads and I think the orange upholstery works really well it's quite a dark color scheme so that just gives it a little bit of vibrancy a bit of freshness really pops away from the the darkness of the superstructure it looks great if you do want a bit of shade though you've got holes on both sides that you can slot poles into and put a canopy up so you have a bit of protection when the sun is really bright and this is where the crew space is on the 80 there's space for two crew down there and that's also where you have the washer and dryer right let's head up top Access up to the sun deck is actually very good. Often these are just incredibly steep, almost ladders, but this is a very nice, easy staircase to get up to this top deck. And there's an important distinction here. This is not a sports bridge yacht. This is a sports cruiser. So there isn't a helm station up here. There is a control station. So the skipper can do slow speed maneuvering. They've got the joystick for the jets and the thruster controls there. But given the cruising speed to this thing and the shallowness of that windscreen, you probably wouldn't want to be up here when it's going along anyway. No, this is for when the engines are off, the sea keepers are on, and you just want to lay in this glorious Florida sunshine. Sun pad forward, teak, sun pad aft, and that's your lot. If you like what you're watching, this is a good time to subscribe to the Yacht Buyer channel. It's very easy. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you'll be notified every time we upload a new tour like this one. Right, let's head downstairs and have a look around the interior. 
into the saloon of Incentivize then, and something that separates her from many other AB yachts 80s is the fact that the galley is on the upper deck. Traditionally, they have it on the lower deck. This owner didn't want that, so we have this nice big galley here on the upper deck, much more sociable. It gives you a good sized galley too. And the other thing about this entire range actually of AB yachts is the depth of the window lines. These windows drop down a long way. You've got the glass bulwarks, so you have plenty of natural light coming in. And when you're out on the water, really excellent views from this interior space here. And it's a really good space, this galley. It's opposite the day head, which again is an owner request, but that's well positioned in a good space for guests to easily come and use it during the day. And yeah, this is a big, powerful, sexy party boat, but this is actually a very functional space. I mean, this top looks like an absolute nightmare to clean. The crew have done a fabulous job because it's spotless, but there's a lot of it, a lot of worktop and very nice design detail. I love the use of wood around here, the way this curves around like this. The underlighting is subtle, but very, very effective. It looks like the countertop is sort of floating over the rest of the cabinetry. And you haven't got a domestic sized fridge, but you have got two very large and very, very cold fridges underneath the counter here and a simply huge ice maker. You can tell this is a boat designed for partying from the size of the ice maker alone. And talking of partying, well, we mentioned the sound system out on deck. There's more sound system good stuff in here. You can see these JBL audio speakers mounted here on the starboard side. It really is an awesome, awesome sound system on board, incentivized. Little sofa here on the starboard side, and then you have a small dining table. I don't think there's gonna be much eating going on around this table. It's more of having drinks, playing cards, socializing. You can actually stick another chair in here as well, so you can get a few more people around this area. And it's very well located next to the pop-up TV, a 75-inch TV, no doubt. If you wanna watch the sport or a movie, then you've got almost a cinema-sized screen that pops out of this cabinet here, and below you've just got more dry storage for dry foodstuffs, plates, crockery, all that sort of thing. Now then, let's get on to the helm station. Let's talk about performance, shall we? Because that has to be a primary reason for wanting a boat like this, and it is incredibly impressive. Bear in mind, this is just over 25 meters long. It's got three 2,000 horsepower V12 diesel engines, and it will do 57 knots. And all of that is controlled through these tiny little throttles here. According to the captain, it is remarkably refined at its cruising speed, which is a remarkable 45 knots where it will cover 300 nautical miles because it has a nine and a half thousand litre fuel capacity. Honestly, the numbers on this thing are absolutely mind boggling and it's all running through water jets as well. If you're not familiar with them, they draw in huge amounts of water from a vent underneath the hull and then fire it out three nozzles in the transom. One is fixed in the middle and the two outer ones are maneuverable. So when you're moving at slow speed, you have this joystick here so you can just twist and push and the boat will follow your commands. You've also got about thruster as well for those fine adjustments of the bow. The helm station itself, well this particular boat's got these outer helm seats, they're all fully adjustable, footrest, bolster, the lot. You could have a middle seat if you wanted, but this owner instead has gone for the leaning post with some storage inside. Dinky little wheel here. And then you have all of your MFDs here displaying all of the boat's information, whether it's the digital switching that we've got on display over on this side, a bigger screen centrally for navigation, and you can see the suite of cameras that you've got here that cover all areas of the boat, including the anchor. So from this helm, the skipper can see when the anchor has come home. There is a driving position up top, which we've already seen, but that really is only for maneuvering. When you're driving the boat, when you're cruising fast, super fast, you'll be doing it from down here. Now then I think we should head downstairs and check out the accommodation. The really nice thing about this design with this staircase to starboard of the helm is that it's open to the windscreen so you get loads of natural light pouring down onto this lower deck and because the galley is up there on the main deck you have space down here on the lower deck for four guest cabins. We're going to start right forward here in the VIP and then it's raised up a level there's still plenty of headroom above my head. As you can see, I'm six foot tall and headroom is no issue. Floor space is really good. It's nice and flat as well. So you can move around the bed very easily and storage is impressive too. Knee level lockers down here, a big wardrobe behind me here and the TV is quite cleverly tucked back here as well. And you have an ensuite bathroom, which is a really good size. It runs down the starboard side here. That's got a nice chunk of hull window as well. So it's nice and bright, all decked out in marble, separate shower cubicle, looks and feels very, very high quality. And if we move amidships, we've got three further cabins. 
as you move amidships, you drop down a short run of steps onto a low level, so the rest of the cabins are all on the same level. And again, that quality of woodwork really shines through here. There's loads of that lovely gloss walnut panelling here, all of the doors, the door frames, stainless steel inserts as well. It does look and feel very, very nice. And in terms of guest cabins in this area, we move over to the port side. This is set up as a double at the moment, but these slide as well, so you can split them apart to give you a pair of twins, just gives you a bit more versatility. In fact, you can lift out the bedside table as well and put that in the middle so you have a bedside table even when they're twins. Obviously, you've got an ensuite bathroom and the TV again is tucked behind the door here. And the other side of this passage, a bunk cabin, absolutely perfect for kids. I mean, they're not sort of made for kids, they're still a decent size, but I imagine kids would really like it in here. It's very cozy, good fun to have the bunk beds. And even they have got nice side tables here in line with their bunks, a big wardrobe, and again, their own private bathroom. Moving amidships, we get to what is the star of the show when it comes to accommodation on board Incentivize, and that is this full beam owner's suite. It is lovely in here. I hope you can get a sense of the scale. Obviously it takes the full width of the boat. Headroom again is very, very good and there's plenty of space to move around. No obstructions underfoot either. You can see the size of the bed as well. So it does feel like a very comfortable, luxurious cabin. And the layout works well too because you have a nice bureau over on this side. You can work from here, stick a laptop on there, but also lift up and put all your makeup in there. Nice mirror in there as well. And then on that side you have a sofa and the TV is mounted up on the bulkhead and there is individual control of AV for each cabin from an iPad so everybody can listen to and watch what they want and personalise the space. Another nice feature of this cabin is having the walk-in wardrobe and that shares some space behind the bed with what is a very smart ensuite bathroom. And these are cleverly placed, they're behind the bed so they act as another layer of insulation from the engine room which is just through that bulkhead. And on that note, the current owner has actually added extra insulation on top of what would normally be there all over the boat to make it as quiet as possible when you're moving along, which is important when you're moving along at 45 knots. And talking of that, I think it's about time to head to the engine room. Engine room access then is through this hatch here in the cockpit. When you consider all the accommodation we've got on this boat, the fact it's 25 metres long and you've got three engines, this machinery space is impressive. Certainly in this area at the bottom of the ladder, standing headroom for somebody of six foot, it's not so good over the engines because of course we've got the tender garage nibbling into space, but considering there are three V12s in here, space around them especially is pretty good and there's decent access to the jet drives themselves as well. And it's a high spec elsewhere. This owner added an extra generator, it's got the upgraded air conditioning, the Seakeeper 18 is tucked down there and over my shoulder here there's a water maker. It's a really high quality specification. Thank you very much for watching that tour of the AB Yachts 80 Incentivized. As I said, she is on the market with Burgess at the moment. We'll put a link to the brokerage page in the description below. And if you like your performance boats, we toured the Pershing GTX 116 at Cannes. I'll put a box up there with that video in it. Down here, we've got some sea trials for you. And if you would like to subscribe, you can click up there. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jack Haynes. This is Yacht Buyer.